Right now we've got Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter all retrograde in our sky. If you want to find out more about how these planets in particular are affecting the collective or your own personal chart, then please stick around. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. So today I'm doing a Saturn check-in. We haven't checked in with Saturn for quite a while. The last video I did about Saturn, that actually got quite a few views, if I remember correctly, and that actually had some predictions about this time. I did mention the fact that things would shut down. I did mention the fact that there would be redundancies. I definitely thought the economy was going to take a bit of a hit. Back then, and I think this was in January, did I make that video? I will dig it out and what I might do is I might cut together um, some bits from that video where I, I got things right because it's always a good thing. Um, but there, in that particular video, there were quite a few things. So the last time we checked in with Saturn properly was many, many months ago. And I wanted to do another Saturn check-in video with you now. And we're going to look at Saturn. We are also going to look at Jupiter and Pluto in the little mini breakdowns. That's what we're going to cover. But for this introductory bit where I'm just going to talk about collective energies, the collective, what's happening in society, I just wanted to focus in on Saturn. So let's take a look. Um, yeah, back back in January, I think I was thinking, I, I didn't want to say that there'd be a stock market crash, but I did have that in mind, but I didn't want to be alarmist. I didn't predict the coronavirus. I did not see that coming. But now I've been really looking at the stars and what's happening at this time. Lots of things are occurring to me. I can see what's going on and I can see why. And Saturn is definitely a key player in this time. So with Saturn, I'm going to write down some things here. Limitations. Limitation. All right, we know. Just going to make sure that you can see that. Yep. We know what's the deal with Saturn. A lot of people talk about delay. Sure, this is a big planet for delay. Uh, and that a lot of delay is happening right now for a lot of people. I know for me, I've had a lot of delay that I've been dealing with. Um, I've had all these ideas and things I want to get on and do, but for various reasons, I've had so many delays. So Saturn, we've got limitations. This is the thing I want to really focus on, limitation. Look at the limitations that are happening around us. The other word that came up, as I was thinking about this yesterday was restriction. Restriction, a lot of restrictive energy going on right now. We've got boundaries, right? These are big things right now and we've got can do, can't do. Boundaries, 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 boundaries are big at this time. Physical boundaries. Right, we've got Saturn in Capricorn. Capricorn is an earth sign. And I'm, I'm gonna talk about that just in just a moment. But boundaries are big at this time. Can do, can't do. What you can do and what you can't do. I remember in my Saturn video, the one I did many months ago, I talked about this was gonna be a time of leadership, that leadership is gonna be tested. And the leaders are all telling us what we can do and what we can't do. It's, it's manifesting in a very black and white way. And sometimes I've often thought that Capricorn can be a very black and white uh, kind of a sign. If you saw my song series, you know that the song that I chose had a black and white film clip. I'm trying to remember what song it was. You Gotta Be by Desiree, I think that was the song. But let's take a look at this in terms of Capricorn. So we've got Saturn, we've got limitations, we've got restrictions, we've got boundaries, we've got can do, can't do. These are the energies and you must be looking at this in your own life. Where are you limited? Where are you restricted? What can you do? What can't you do? How have your boundaries changed? You know, have you, have you, and a lot of us, our boundaries have shrunk. We can't go out anymore. We can't uh, hop on a plane and, and go certain places anymore. There's a lot of things that we can't do. So if we take a look at this in terms of Capricorn, 
Right, so Capricorn is an earth sign. Right, we're dealing with earth. So what is the, the bit of earth that is being governed so tightly and minutely right now? It is what I've always thought of this. The physical body is just, it's a patch of earth, right? It's your own little patch of earth, physical body. This is being governed very tightly. <clears throat> now, we've got social distancing in place. Social distancing. Or distancing, there we go. So like, think about boundaries, limitations. This is all so Saturnian, what's going on right now, and it's gonna last another couple of years, right? This weird phase that we're in is definitely gonna last another couple of years. Um, things will change, and I'm gonna talk about the shift and the change that's gonna happen in brief when Saturn moves into Aquarius, and that's Feb 2023, but physical body, little patch of earth, is being governed so, so tightly, social distancing, right? And if we have a look at where this is, 10, right? So one Aries, 10, Capricorn. So we've got Saturn here, right? If we had Saturn here, and not just Saturn, we'd want uh, Jupiter as well, I'm just gonna put that, and Pluto as well. And Ketu, South Node as well, right, to cause the pandemic, because these are the players that have really done it. I hope you can see that on the screen, yep. If we were to put them here, six, because this is also Earth. And so is this, too. But what's this kind of Earth? Virgo, what kind of Earth is here? This is health, right? And yeah, this is about health. So if all of this activity was happening here, I think the concern would be about health. Here we've got physicality, we've got money, we've got beauty. It's a different type of um, earth, but it's earth again. And I'll put the word, so here I'll put health. Here I'm gonna put beauty. I don't know what kind of restrictions we'd have here. Maybe everyone would have to wear designer clothes or something. I don't know. That would be ridiculous. But anyway, that would never happen. Scratch that. Anyway, earth beauty, earth health. I think people would be genuinely concerned about health here. People are concerned about health here. A lot of people are. But I think the big concern that's happening in this portion of earth is power. And what's happening is that the leadership is really t tightly regulating and governing and putting restrictions around, limitations around what our little physical patches of earth can and can't do, which is our physical bodies, right? And they're loving it. They are loving the power. It's the power that they're enjoying. They're enjoying the ability to tell us where we can and can't go, what we can and can't do, um, the ability to switch a country on and off, switch a city on and off, switch a building on and off. So they've done that in Melbourne, in Australia. They've said that you know people who are living in this particular building cannot go out. You know, look at the power. Look at what's happening. And I think that you know we've got um, Pluto here, we've got Jupiter here as well. Right. I mean, it's amazing. When we had Jupiter come into Capricorn, which was, I think, March, April, I had a look at this briefly yesterday. I was clicking up and down the months. And that was when Jupiter was debilitated. And wasn't that the time when our wisdom had gone out the window? It, wisdom was gone. <coughs> there was no wisdom happening. It was just kind of um, 
you know, this pandemic sort of energy, it, it was strange. It was strange. And now that Jupiter is back, Jupiter is back in Sagittarius and will be for a while. Uh, that's also why I think what was happening in the collective was more around beliefs. Um, you know, the Black Lives Matter thing was happening and I'm pretty sure that coincides with when Jupiter back in Sagittarius, which, you know, when Jupiter and when these big planets were there in Sagittarius, things like Me Too, how we treat each other was definitely being looked at in a big way. Uh, but I think the pandemic and I think all of this will, I mean, it's still very much the main thing and it's going to go on. It's going to go on for, for this entire transit, I think. Um, but let's, let's take a little bit more of a look at that. So yeah, yeah. And that's, I've got a note here that planes are all grounded. So planes right? No um, air activity. So this heavy Capricorn, Saturn in Capricorn. And we've got the big heavy planets all here in Capricorn, right? They've completely grounded all the planes. So that's quite fascinating. And I had the word landowner. Hang on. Get rid of this thing. Here we go. Landowner. And if we're looking at the term landowner in the context of um, say your physical body, for example, right? I was thinking about this yesterday and it's like if, if we're a little patch of earth, well, who are the landowners? And well, because it got me thinking about when you go to the doctor, the little, the patch of earth that is my physical body is totally in their hands, you know, they become the landowner in a weird sort of a way, you know, they make all the decisions, just like landowners will till the land and give it nutrients and take the weeds out. Well, that's kind of what a doctor does to your physical patch of earth. So let's see on that point. Oh, well, we'll come to that next. What I will take you through now is just very, very quickly, um, what I see as happening potentially, and this is, we're just going to do this super quickly. What I see potentially happening when uh, Saturn moves into Aquarius. Now Aquarius, so we had Capricorn was Earth, Aquarius of course is air. And this happens Feb 2023. So what if, what's Saturn going to be testing or working through or dealing with in this transit? So just as we've got Saturn moving through, I'll bring this back. So here, 11. Saturn's here, going to move up here. He owns both of these houses. Here it's about earth, here it's about air. So it's definitely going to be about our minds. So just as we've got leaders and leadership, they're loving clocking up power at this time. They're loving the ability to make rules and laws on all these things. And they're actively clocking up all the powers that they can. I think they, the, the powers that be are going to try to clock up power on our mental space. Uh, it'll be about information, it'll be about concepts, it'll be about ideas. It will be more about freedom of speech than ever before. I know we've got Brian Rose of London Real who's doing a lot of work for freedom of speech right now with Saturn in this place. It's brilliant what he's doing. Um, but we're going to need more of that. I think that's going to increase when Saturn moves here. Leaders and leadership type people, they're going to want to, I guess, invade our mental space or <laughs> control our mental space or whatever that is. But equally, what I think is going to happen here is that the people will be in charge, right? People. So here we've got leaders 
Aquarius is more about the people and this is going to be time people power as people and I count myself as one of the people always I always will be and um, we've got to rise up and we've got to say no and I think these guys are going to try <coughs> to, to take more powers as they can but we have to stand up and we have to say no and that time is coming that's going to be Feb 2023 I think that 2.5 years uh, transit after Feb 2023 it's got to be about the people saying all right leaders you've done your thing now we're going to create society um, in such a way that suits us I'm going to make more videos about this. I have a lot of thoughts about this. It's just very high level for now. I don't want to talk too much about all these things. But um, just very quickly, let's head back to Saturn in Capricorn and it being about power. It's also... Another thing occurred to me as I was... Um, I went to see the doctor, finally. <laughs> this was like... Was it on the weekend? Well, anyway. And... They're just going to like do some tests or whatever. I'm fine. I'm getting better anyway. So I, I don't have any uh, issues. The work that I've been doing with David Hawkins has been brilliant. And I'm going to share that with you in videos. I'm just going to quote from him and share that because I think it's just such good, great stuff. Um, but I went to the doctor. And while I was sitting in the doctor's surgery, I had to, I had a bit of a sniffle. And I had tissues, pocket, like packet tissues in my pocket. And a couple of times, you know, I got the tissues out and I blew my nose. And anyone who knows me knows that I always have a runny nose and I'm always sniffling. And it's just the thing that when I change temperature, if I go from indoors to outdoors, or outdoors to indoors or whatever it is, I always have a sniffle. It's just, and I, I can see in my chart actually why I have that. Um, so I, you know, blew my nose a couple of times. Anyway, this nurse just appears out of nowhere and she comes up to me and all of a sudden I've got this like temperature gun in, uh, in my third eye region and she just nabs it she just gets my temperature and I don't know what it would have said it probably would have said there we go I'll just draw one of my very elaborate diagrams <laughs> she just zaps and she gets it a 36.2 I'm guessing that's what it was in Singapore they did that in Singapore as well when I, I stopped over and before I go into the hotel they just zap you and then they say if you can't can or can't go in to your where you've booked for that evening so anyway she and i had a lovely conversation she was such a sweet young lady she was doing her job and she was doing a very good job right i had no problem at all but look at this i thought about it and i thought yeah this is power right this is that top-down power. And I was talking about this in, that, in my old Saturn in Capricorn video, which, as I say, I might edit and put up some little grabs from that. Um, I was going to do it in this video, but there's no time. Um, so power, look at that. She came in, no permission. Uh, she took the information. And all in the name of good governance. Right, so she's. And I have no problem with it because, you know, I, I do care for the collective. I don't want anyone catching my germs either. You know, I, I had no problem with that at all. Um, and she was doing a good job, and we had a little joke and a laugh about it because she said, "Are you okay?" I said, "Yeah." I said, "I just always have the sniffles." She said, "Me too." So you know, it it was totally fine. But it got me thinking about wow, they can just do that. They can just come into your space and they can just take your information without asking you, without, um, you know, that, 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 that this is very interesting, right? And it's all being done in the name of protecting society. Protecting the whole. All is one, right? That's very Saturnian, what's going on there. 
And all this protection is really, it's really control. It's very interesting because some of, some of what's happening, I hope you can see all of that, yeah. Some of what's happening here, I do like anyway. I, I, I love that people care about germs these days and hygiene and cleanliness and I'm so happy about that because so many workplaces I've been to, I always, I don't know, people don't care about that stuff and I always end up getting sick and, you know, um, so some aspects of this I like. I think it's good. I think it's good we care about germs and we care about bugs. And, um, you know, I quite like when you're in a shopping queue and you've got a bit of space around you. I think that's quite nice. Because in Primark, which is like uh, in America, you have Target or Kmart. Primark, that's what we have in the UK. And, oh, my goodness, people are just squished up against each other, breathing down each other's necks. Oh, I just can't stand it. So... Some of this I like, but some of this I don't like as well. Um, and, and what I think is that while Saturn's in Capricorn, I think leaders are going to try to acquire as much power and control as they possibly can. This is about power and control. This, this is not about health. As I said, if these planets were all hanging out in the, to just come out of, say, Leo and they've gone into Virgo, um, and that come out of that kind of fire and into that kind of earth, it would be a different thing going on because it's coming out of a Sagittarian fire. So we're dealing with leadership anyway, going into more leadership, top down, power, control, no permission. We're coming in, we're getting your information. We do what we want. You have to obey. It's pretty amazing stuff. So I think I've waffled on for long enough. This is This is going to... Um, just fix my fringe while I'm here. I'm just <laughs> 22 minutes. How about we get on with the mini reports? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up the memory card. I'm going to save this file now because I hope you're watching, Christina. Thank you so much for telling me that information about the 24 minute mark and all that. That's helped so much. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this down, I'm going to bring up a new file, and we're going to start with Aries Moon. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I've got a fresh memory card and we're ready to go. So we're going to welcome Aries Moon. Aries Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're going to take a look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter. They're all in retrograde. They are currently straddling two houses of your chart. It's a lot of intense, heavy energy that's really weighting one side of your chart. We're going to have a look at what that is. Uh, and I'm going to give you some dates so that you can get an idea as to when things will shift. So let's take a look at what's happening. Now for you, Aries Moon, it's your 10th and 9th houses. So you've got Saturn materializing your career in the 10th. Um, Saturn might be testing your career in the 10th house, might be testing you might be making things a bit challenging, tightening limitations and things like that. You've still got Jupiter and Pluto in the ninth house, though, working through your beliefs, your relationship with your dad, relationship with authority figures, right? So this is very work-oriented for you. This is about your professional life. Um, it seems to be that Jupiter might be helping you out here. So this is nice. Gains that come at this time are definitely thanks to Jupiter. So Jupiter is good here. Um, but anything that's being broken down or made difficult could be related to Pluto. The breakdown and the renewal would definitely be Pluto. The limitations, the squeezing, the tightness in terms of career, that would definitely be Saturn. So you're really working with these three energies in a big way at the moment. Um, September, October, the three planets around that September, October time, all three planets are going forward. So look out for a shift September, October in regards to these energies. And January 2021 onwards, all three of these are clear of that ninth house. Okay, so there will be a shift at that time as well. But as you keep watching my reports, 
we'll keep talking about all the different transits, but I just wanted to do a Saturn check-in, also to say that, look, if things are tough, work with Saturn. He is just trying to, he's a, he's a taskmaster, and he wants you to rise to the challenge and be disciplined and make it happen. So see how you go, Aries Moon. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, in this mini report, we're just gonna have a look at Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. They are currently straddling two houses of your chart. They're big, heavy energies. It's been a while since I've checked in with you about Saturn, and it's important we do that, um, especially as he's retrograde. The energy is a bit more prominent, a bit more available to us right now. So what's happening for you is happening in your ninth and eighth houses. So Saturn is going to try to progress you professionally from here on. He's moved into the ninth for you and he wants to progress you professionally. This could be a great time to get a mentor. This could be a great time to be learning something um, to do with your professional line. Uh, your beliefs around work are also going to be tested. Beliefs around authority figures and what authority figures mean to you. Um, core beliefs might be being tested by Saturn. And sometimes when core beliefs are tested, sometimes our bodies might express that and that it'll be weeded out through your body as well. Um, so it's really quite interesting. But that is fire. I think, yeah, hence why it could be your body as well. It's mind as well. It's very much mind too. But you've got Jupiter and Pluto in the eighth house that are still working through those legacy issues around dependence around family, around other people's money, around other people's assets, around um, how you engage and interact with your spouse, your spouse's family, but it could also be your family too if you're not married. Um, and it's other people's assets and it is around dependence. Sometimes eighth house transits, they make us depend on other people. So if you're going through any of that, know that it's Jupiter and Pluto are still clearing out that side of your life. Now that is going to change. January 2021 you're going to be clear of that. Okay, I think you're going to be quite clear of the eighth house which is going to be great because you've had a lot. You've had a lot of working with that eighth house. It has been full on. Um, and Jupiter's good. Jupiter's going to move into a better place as well. Have a look September, October of this year. All those three planets are going to be going forward as well. That's Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. But Jupiter's good for you right now. But yeah, Saturn and Pluto, I would say, um, are probably the planets that might be testing you a little bit if you are feeling tested. Hang in there. Work with the giants of the zodiac, the giants being Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. Work with these guys. They're amazing. And... Um, Rise to the challenge, rise to any challenge that, that you're being given at this time. You will come out so strong, I promise. All right, Taurus Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now gonna welcome, and we are now gonna welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Today, we're gonna take a look at Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. They're currently all in retrograde and they are straddling two houses. So they're really concentrated in a very particular part of your chart. A lot of heavy energy is really pulling a lot of focus there. So let's take a look at where that is. That's the eighth and seventh houses for you. So we've got Saturn in your eighth house, who's basically here to transform your whole life. Okay, this is a really big transit over the next two and a half years. Um, Saturn, when he moves through the eighth house, he often changes people's career, like your the whole career path can totally change or your family situation can change or um, resources, money, assets, what you depend on, uh, th things around dependence, these things can, can change and, and um, a lot of good things can happen here too, right? So change is not bad, change is not, you know, it's good and bad, right? So, um, 
Let's have a look. I really like this transit. It's a tough transit, but you come out very strong and wise. So you've got Jupiter and Pluto in the, your seventh house working through old issues to do with your marriage um, or your business or your public. If you're a public figure, if you've got, you know, um, kind of like you've written a book and you've got an audience to, to keep impressing or that kind of thing, right? So um, Jupiter transit through the seventh house is good. It may give you gains. It may improve a lot of things. It might bring um, opportunities in. It might bring that marriage partner in or um, take your relationship to, to a new level or that kind of thing. So there's good that can come through Jupiter. But know that... Saturn's going to be testing limits, um, testing weak links to do with codependence, especially if you're codependent at all. Um, that is going to be tested and Pluto as well. Pluto is going to want to break down relationships that aren't working, partnerships that aren't working. So you've got some really interesting energies happening here. Now know that in September and October these three planets are going to go forward. So you're going to have some forward momentum, some forward movement. If you're feeling that things are stuck, delayed, dragging, taking time, know that you're going to have some forward movement September, October. And then January 2021, all three of these planets are going to be clear. Everybody's going to be in that eighth house uh, as opposed to in your seventh house. So Gemini Moon, if things are tough, if you are finding things difficult at this time, hang in there and um, keep up with these reports because I'll keep sharing with you what's going on in the sky uh, in case that helps. So thank you so much for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're looking at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter. Just noticing that my camera battery is flashing. Let's keep going. Um, it's really interesting to look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter at this time because they're all kind of close together. They're straddling two houses at the moment. So we've got, we're really for you we're looking at the seventh and the sixth houses. So we've got Saturn in the seventh house who's trying to bring growth to your married life or your business something to do with partnerships. He's, he might be testing the weak links there. Um, and that's going to be over the next couple of years that that's going to be happening. You've got Jupiter and Pluto there in the sixth house working through issues to do with health or competitors or any legal matters or any career matters as well or your service to the world, right? So Jupiter and Pluto are working in that area. Uh, things may feel like hard work right now with these three in this particular area. I totally understand. So what I want to say to you is hang in there. Better transits are definitely coming. Do watch my reports because you'll be able to see when those good transits are. Um, September, October, all three planets are going to move forward again. So that should be good. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling delayed, if you're feeling any of that, know that September, October onwards, you should have better momentum, some better movement. And January 2021, um, all of those planets uh, basically going to clear. So the sixth house, you know, Jupiter and Pluto are going to move into the seventh. So the energy will shift again at that time. So Cancer Moon, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Today we're going to take a look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter as the three of these planets straddle two houses in your chart. It's really interesting to take a look. I mean, they're the big guns. These are the big guys. These are the big energies and they're together. For you, we're really looking at the sixth and the fifth houses. So we're looking at Saturn, who's in your sixth house. Oh, this is good. So Saturn's going to bring growth to you. Um, Saturn's going to grow your career, going to grow your health, hopefully stabilize your health. Um, he will definitely bring opportunities your way. Okay. Uh, and if that's not happening, it could be, I would have to look at the particulars of your chart to see why that's not happening. But this is, this is a good transit 
from the Saturn perspective. You've still got Jupiter and Pluto though in the fifth house working through issues to do with romance, creativity or creative projects, right? Um, things that you want to produce and put into the world um, or your children, okay? So children could be challenging at this time. Um, so Jupiter might be improving things here for you, uh, but if things feel like they're being broken down, know that that's Pluto. Pluto's doing his work and it will be to do with your fifth house. Uh, hi Leo Moon, sorry about that. The camera got cut and I think we were talking about your fifth house, but I think we covered everything. I think we got through let me just double check my notes here. Yeah, I think we did. I, I, the only thing I wanted to say, that if you feel like things are breaking down in your life, just wanna make sure we're recording. Yes, and sound is recording, yes. Um, if you feel like things are breaking down in your life, it is to do with Pluto, I would say, because Saturn's here to build you up. Um, Saturn might be testing some weak links, but he's gonna give you opportunities here. Jupiter, I think Jupiter's transit is okay, but Pluto could be the one breaking things down for you. Um, keep watching my transit videos, keep, keep up with the news and you'll be able to see what other good transits are coming. It's not all doom and gloom out there, there's a lot of good coming as well, okay? So um, hang in there. September, October, the three planets that are currently retrograde, Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter, they're gonna go forward, so this is great. Um, if you're feeling stuck or delayed or that things are taking time, know that you're going to get some forward movement coming up. And then January 2021, all three planets are clear. So all three planets are going to be, I believe, in your sixth house. So, <sighs> Leo Moon, I hope you're doing well. Hang in there. Look, if you're going through challenging times, if you're going through tough stuff, Know that Saturn is polishing you into a diamond. Know that Pluto is as well. Pluto's a tough guy and I'm learning about him and I'm sharing what I know. And um, these are the energies to work with because we are gonna come out so strong and so sparkling. It's gonna be amazing. So Leo Moon, I wish you well. Take care of yourself. And we are now gonna welcome Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now today I wanted to talk about three planets in particular. I want to talk about Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter. These are all in retrograde at the moment and they're currently straddling two houses of your chart. So they're all hanging out together uh, in a concentrated area of your chart. For you it's the fourth house and the fifth house. Fifth house is where Saturn is. Um, Saturn's going to be testing you in terms of things to do with your soul expression. So that relates to romance. Um, it definitely relates to your creative project, your creative output, how you express yourself in the world, right? This is gonna be tested. Um, it could be tested, you might feel limited. Saturn in the fifth house is not so bad, it's quite good actually. If you're trying to get off an addiction or something like that, this can be an amazing time. Um, because you, the discipline will come naturally to you. So this could be amazing for that. But in terms of your creative projects, if you're finding there are delays, if you're finding there are limitations, if you're finding there's no budget, if you're finding, um, or you know, and it could be to do romance, it could be to do with children. So these are quite diverse areas, but um, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. So Saturn is in this, this part of your, chart right now. Uh, I know actually one a friend of mine, she was going through this transit, Saturn transiting her fifth house. And yeah, her relationship, oh my gosh, every time we'd sit down for coffee, she would tell me of all the issues and it was pretty full on. So um, if you're in a relationship, you know, hang in there. Uh, you've still got Jupiter and Pluto in your fourth house working through home related issues or issues to do with your mum issues to do with domestic scene comforts. With, with mum, it can be to do with mum's health as well. Um, so know that those planets are there. And Jupiter and Pluto will really be, will really be um, 
working to set you up. Pluto might be breaking things down that aren't working out. Okay, uh, Jupiter will be looking to, yes, expand you where he can, but um, sometimes I find Jupiter <sighs> laziness. Is that Saturn or Jupiter? You know, sometimes I'm not sure. It's, um, it's an interesting one. Home-related issues, domestic scene. I mean, if, if you're feeling the need to relax and do little, I would say tune into that and I would say follow that and honour that at this time. I kind of say that to all signs really because quite frankly the world is not in great shape right now. So if you're feeling the need to rest, do that. But um, know that if things are stagnant or you're feeling stuck or things aren't moving for you, September, October, these three planets are going forward. So look for some forward momentum then. And January 2021, uh, all three of these planets are going to be clear of that fourth house area, so they're all going to be in the fifth. So Jan 2021, you should notice a shift of energy as well. Things will become more obvious to you as to what you are working with and what you are working on. So Virgo Moon, as always, come back and watch my reports. You'll see more. But thank you so much for joining me. And we are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining now, today we're going to look at three planets. We're going to look at Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter. All three planets are in retrograde and they're currently straddling two houses. Now, for you, this what are the two houses? They are the fourth and third houses. Okay, so Saturn is going to be placing a bit of pressure on your home life. It's a really interesting transit, Saturn in the fourth. It can offer you really good things, can offer you some real challenges as well. Um, so it could be some pressure placed on your home life. Uh, yeah, so there can be some really good things, not so great things. You've still got Jupiter and Pluto in the third house, working through your personal courage and image that you present into the world. So really for you, Libra Moon, these three planets are, it's quite personal energy. This is not, you're not doing too much in the collective. It's, this is good hermit time, you know. If you need to spend time on your own, if you need to spend time at home, um, working on your personal sense of self and who you are in the world and your courage, that'll be really good for you at this time. Now, if you get the sense that you're stuck, delayed, things aren't really moving for you, um, September, October, look for forward momentum then. These three planets are going to be going forward at that time. And Jan 2021, all three of these planets are going to be clear of that third house area. So, I mean, the concentration will be on you and the home, the domestic, the domestic scene um, in some way, Libra Moon. But keep watching my reports, keep tuning in, keep seeing what the news is with the planets because there's always good transits coming. There's always good news out there as well. Know that if things are tough, you're being polished into a diamond so hang in there and keep working with these tough energies because they are polishing you into the diamond that you truly are so libra moon thank you so much for stopping by we are now going to welcome scorpio moon scorpio moon welcome thank you so much for joining now today we're looking at saturn pluto and jupiter as these three straddle two houses and they are in retrograde at the moment okay so for you this activity is all happening in your third and second houses so saturn is trying to give you opportunities to grow you know we know you've come out of sarisati we know that saturn wants to boost you um, boost your courage and improve your life okay but this might this might be dragging a little bit and this might be dragging a little bit because Jupiter and Pluto are dragging a bit behind in that second house. They're still stuck there and they're still doing work there. So you might still be having some upheaval, some changes in family or home life, which may be preventing your growth. The other thing is that the world is in a bit of a mess right now, isn't it? So, I mean, things are going to take time. Uh, Jupiter should be helping. This is a good Jupiter transit for you, so I'm really happy to report that. This is great. Jupiter should be helping you improve your wealth and your savings. But if tensions are high at home, know that it's probably Pluto 
that's causing any issues. Um, Pluto might be trying to break things down for you at the moment. Allow it, okay? Allow the breakdown. Just allow it and know that when it clears and when it happens, Saturn can really effectively give to you then. So hang in there. This is a good transit that you're in. Uh, you're one of the lucky ones, Scorpio Moon. So please do hang in there. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon. Sagittarius Moon, thank you so much for joining. Now today we're just taking a quick look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter. Those three are currently retrograde and I want to have a look at those three as they straddle two houses of your charts. There's a lot of energy concentrated in one part of your chart. For you, it's in your second and first houses. So Saturn is finishing Sarisate. Good. And I tell you, it's a good time to be finishing Sarisate because what you want is for this transit to be, I feel like this next 2.5 years, anyone who's dealing with some Sarisate, perfect because the world is in a bit of a pickle, right? The world is in a bit of a mess. So it's actually good if that you're, you've got this time frame coinciding with um, what's going on in the world. Perfect. Uh, well done you. Well done Sagittarius Moon for choosing to set up your life in this way as we do before we're born. That's what I believe. So um, Saturn's finishing Sadi Sati. Because I do, I really, I kind of believe that we pick our chart and it's like a hot couture jacket of stars that we try on before we incarnate. So for you, Saturn's finishing Sari Sati, testing any weak links in your values, family, major wealth savings. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty big. You're going through a big transit, but good on you for going through it at this time when the whole world is slow and a bit tired anyway. Uh, you've got Jupiter and Pluto in your first house working through your entire sense of self. Um, any health drains, energy drains, if you're tired, it's probably due to that. It's probably due to Jupiter and Pluto. What I can say for you is really rest, really take time out. Hermit mode, um, perfect. You know, it's a good time for that. There's no fear of missing out. There's no FOMO, right? No one's doing anything anyway. Everyone's at home anyway. So um, this is good for you. So Sagittarius Moon. The other thing I want to say is that if you feel like things are stuck, stagnant, and you're like, come on, I really need some movement. What's going on? September, October, all the three of these planets are going to move forward. So you are going to see some forward momentum then. Okay, we're not going to see much forward momentum for a little while. Um, so, and I do think that the universe is giving us a bit of a breather because June was intense. Those eclipses and all that was pretty major. So we need time. January 2021, all three of these planets are going to be clear of that um, first house. So you are going to notice a shift September, October of this year. You're definitely going to notice a shift January 2021. Uh, start of next year so Sagittarius moon but keep watching my transit videos keep seeing what's new and there are always good transits in the sky so um, if you're going through anything tough I want to say please hang in there that you're being polished into a diamond I'm kind of saying that for every sign at the moment because I think we all need that message right now so Sagittarius moon thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining now we're going to take a look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter as these three planets are in retrograde and they're straddling two houses of your chart. So it's a lot of planetary energy concentrated in one area of your chart. So for you, it's your first and twelfth houses. Um, Saturn is at the height of Sati uh, testing your entire sense of self. Now, I want to say to you that this is a good time to be in Sati Sati, perfectly timed because quite frankly, the world is gonna be a bit out of shape for the next couple of years anyway. So you've chosen a really, really good time um, to have Sadi Sati, or your soul before it incarnated chose a really good time to turn up and to have Sadi Sati. So well done on that front. Uh, let's have a look here. You've still got Jupiter and Pluto in your 12th house working through who you are spiritually, who you are as a spiritual being. This is fantastic. Um, working through any escapist tendencies. It's all right to escape a bit, but every now and then you do have to face the world as well. So um, any losses that you're encountering right now, probably due to the activities of Jupiter and Pluto in your 12th house. So Capricorn Moon, the other thing I wanted to say to you is that 
September, October, these three planets are going forward. So if you feel that you're stuck, things are stagnant, um, know that you're going to have some forward momentum September, October. And then January 2021, you're going to experience another shift because all these three planets clear, the, the, you know, Jupiter and Pluto are out of that 12th house. So you're going to have another obvious shift of energy again there. But do keep watching my reports because I'll be sharing with you the various transits as they happen in our sky. And there's always a good transit coming up. So Capricorn Moon, hang in there. You are made of tough stuff. Um, Saturn is polishing you into a diamond. And um, please know that, you know, good transits are coming. So stay tuned and see what those are. So thank you so much for joining Capricorn Moon. We are now going to welcome we are now going to welcome Aquarius Moon. Aquarius Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. And today we're just looking at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter. Those three are retrograde in our sky at the moment. And they're currently straddling two houses of your chart. So it's a lot of big, heavy uh, power player energy that's concentrated in one specific part of your chart. So for you, it's the 12th and 11th houses. So let's take a look. Now Saturn is preparing for its time on your moon. So that's Sardisathi. You're in the first phase of Sardisathi. Can I just say you have picked a brilliant time or your soul before it incarnated picked a brilliant time to have it Sardisathi. This is the best time to have it because quite frankly the world is a bit out of shape and will be, I believe, it will be out of shape for the next two and a half years, next five years. Uh, easily you know um, I do tend to think this is very long term I haven't done this on a video yet but I will be doing it I, I tend to think in 10 years time the world is really going to improve and that's when we're going to the world will flourish again uh, but I think it's going to take time so um, but I think in I think the next five years could be a little bit tough and I think so Feb 2023, 20, gosh, no one else is getting this long range. You're Aquarius, you're getting the long range over, overview. Uh, I've gone off my, my notes and my chart for you. Um, what I think is that, you know, well, I did say this at the start of this video, didn't I? That Feb 2023, that's going to be Aquarius time, right? Saturn in Aquarius, you know all about Aquarius. It being Aquarius moon, the people are going to have to rise up that could be a bit of a tumultuous time as well. So, um, but I have to look at it, I have to study it. So I'm, I'm gonna make videos about this. So stick around on the channel, more is coming. But um, Saturn's preparing you right now and Saturn is testing your spiritual self, okay? Saturn's testing, okay, who are you? And are you gonna, how are you gonna be when I really get into your mind, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I, what I wanna say is this is a perfect time to have Sati Sati because the world is out of shape for a little while. Um, doesn't mean you can't get married or change a job or build a house or no, you can do everything. Everything's still going on, but the world will feel a bit weird, I think, for a while. Um, now, you've still got Jupiter and Pluto in your, your 11th house working through your games. This could be a really good transit, especially from Jupiter's side of things. Um, any losses that you incur at this time could be due to Pluto's work. Pluto could be breaking things down. Um, breaking things down that you don't need that so that you can have more come in later okay so it's not bad breakdown it's good breakdown we're dealing with the 11th house here so I think things are looking pretty good for you Aquarius moon um, know that if you're going through anything tough if you're stuck if things are taking time there are delays and you're like what is going on know that September October these three planets are going to go forward and you should have some forward momentum then and then you're going to have another shift January 2021 when all three of these planets they clear out of the 11th and they're really firmly in that 12th house there. So you'll notice another energetic shift then too, but we'll be talking more about that as time goes on. All right, Aquarius Moon, well, I'm going to leave you there. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to meet Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, 
What we're going to do is we're going to quickly look at Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter. These three planets are currently retrograde in our skies. Um, they're currently straddling two houses, so that's, you know, they're concentrated in a specific area of your chart. For you, it's the 11th and 10th houses. So Saturn wants to reward you. He wants to set you up for Sade Sade. So this is a good two and a half year transit. Saturn is going to grow you. He's going to give you opportunities. He's going to give you things. It's going to be amazing, okay? Um, and by the way, it's a great time to go into Sade Sade. That's 7.5 years of Saturn being a little bit tough with you, um, but perfect timing because once you come out of it, the world will be a lot better. You, everything will be better. So very good. Um, very good time timing there. So now you've still got Jupiter and Pluto in your 10th house working through your career. I've got a flashing camera battery, so I'm going to be very quick. Um, these two, Jupiter and Pluto, are working through your career sector. So any career difficulties that you're having right now, they're due to these two planets working through, breaking down things that are no longer working there. It could be to do with ego. Jupiter in the 10th is, is, is never great. Um, Pluto, of course, you know, will be looking to break down, uh, you know, things. So it's good. Allow the breakdown to happen. Allow the space to be cleared because you've got a lot of good things coming in, especially Saturn wants to bring you good things immediately. Okay, so that's great. So allow the breakdowns in your life because Saturn wants to replace it with something better. Um, but yeah, the other thing I wanted to say, Pisces Moon, is that if things are stuck, stagnant for you, know that September, October, these three planets are going forward. So things should move again for you then. So that should be quite good. And then we've got Jan 2021. All of these three planets um, are going to clear. Definitely, um, you're going to clear out of that 10th house. So things will be concentrated for you in the 11th house. That should be really good. All right. So Pisces Moon, you've got a lot to look forward to. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. So thank you so much for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you next time.